and the sight and sound of the best of brass this week comes from Foden Motorworks Band here in Southport. Now Foden's themselves come from Sandbach, that's in Cheshire, quite a bit down the M6. But lorries have been coming out of their motorworks down there since long before motorways were ever even thought of, since 1856 in fact. The sound of the famous band was first heard back in 1900. It was formed by Mr Edwin Foden, his way of celebrating the relief of Mafeking. Since then, the band's won over £50,000 in prize money and a big reputation. And Foden's are one of three bands on the way to London to the Royal Albert Hall in October. And if Foden's manage to win the national championships, it'll be the 12th time for them. The other two bands from the Northwest going to London are CWS Manchester. They appeared in this hall just a few, few weeks ago. And Wingate's Temperance Band, and they're based just 20 miles or so inland from here. Now, competition may well be the lifeblood of brass bands, but let's make one thing clear right from the start tonight. Foden's are here not to compete, but to entertain. That goes, too, for our other band, the Rochdale Metropolitan Youth Band, and for our soloist, the tuba soloist, John Fletcher. And that entertainment is going to come via Wagner, through Gordon Langford, and, yes, from those Beatles in Merseyside. It's Wagner, though, who rules for a start, because James Scott is going to lead the Foden Motorworks Band straight into that famous introduction to Act Three from Lohengrin. <laughs> appeal of Wagner, but now the narrower appeal, the individual appeal, if you like, of a man to a woman. Colin Cranston on euphonium is at his persuasive best, as he says, as men have said down the ages, believe me, 
if all those endearing young charms. <laughs> Gordon Langford put the words into Colin's mouth with that arrangement. Now, we're too near to Liverpool to ignore it. Uh, Southport officially is now part of Merseyside, and the influence of the Beatles spread, of course, a great deal further than that. So we now make what's almost a compulsory tribute to their impact with a very special arrangement of Obladi, Oblada. Thank you. 
that arrangement was done specially for us by Mr. Frank Bryce, who incidentally conducts Bessers of the Barn Band, another champion band from the Northwest. Now, though, to our soloist and the distinction of a first performance. It's a fairly rare thing we're about to see in here because the four bass players of Foden's band are joined by the principal tuba of the London Symphony Orchestra, John Fletcher, for a piece written for solo tuba and band. Michael Brand wrote it, so listen for the first time to Tuba Tapestry. Thank you. It was a rare pleasure. You're something of a rarity in, in that you're a brass 
musician of the highest order, and you've no brass band background, have you? No, that was accidental. Um, it is rather unusual, in fact, very unusual, but I lived on the north side of Leeds, which is, of course, in Yorkshire, as some of you may know, and um, that is in the heart of the brass band country, but if I wanted to play with a brass band, which I did, it would have meant four or five bus journeys, and... Um, my father, in fact, ran an orchestra right on the doorstep, so I used to play the cello part and the bass part in his orchestra and didn't have to sort of travel anywhere. <laughs> so it was a sort of accidental thing, which I do rather regret in retrospect. Why do you regret it? I would have liked to play with the band. Would your path have been any different? Would you have ended up where you are today, do you think, if you had played with a brass band? No idea. It's pure speculation. Um, all my colleagues in the, in the LSO played in a band at some time or another and there are some, um, several of them, very distinguished members of the brass band movement. There are advantages, but they do say that there are limitations too to come up through the brass bands. What do you feel? Oh, um, have you got an hour and a half to spare? <laughs> What's the main one then? Um, well, the possible limitations for my instruments are that there's, if you're not in a brass band, there's nobody to tell you that that's the top note and the, and the bottom note, and you're not supposed to play faster than that or slower than that. Um, mm. That has been the case sometimes. You just find out for yourself, do you? Well, um, my father said we need a pedal something there, or a top W, and he, he used to have to get it because I didn't know any better. <laughs> that was a beautiful piece, uh, piece you just played for us. Why is it yes. so rare to have something written for tuba and band like that? I really don't know, and I, I would like to see it change. I would like to see the, particularly the E-flat bass players in brass bands get up and play pieces, but there are very few of them, and we're hoping to gradually change this. This is one piece, Edward Gregson wrote a concerto, which we did recently, and I'm hoping this will start a building the pyramid. I hope so too, John. We've enjoyed listening to it, and I'm glad you talked about the way people come up through brass bands, because we had a chance earlier today, out in the sunshine by the Marine Lake, to hear a taste of Lancashire brass of the future. It's a band, it's a Rochdale youth band, in fact, also bound for the Royal Albert Hall in October to try and win the Butlins Championship. To name its name, you're going to hear it now, it's the Rochdale Metropolitan Youth Band, conducted by John Siswick. Thank you. 
Siebert and it was called Bees Are Buzzing. Those fingers were a buzzing too, weren't they? Well, they can cool down soon because unfortunately that's nearly it for us. Now, I live up in the Pennines and looking down, we do, in the Pennines, on one side into Lancashire, on the other side into Yorkshire, so that I'll be back next week to introduce a programme from Yorkshire featuring the Yorkshire Imperial Metals Band, the Wakefield Schools Band, they're just back from America, and a soloist, George Chisholm. For now, though, let's say goodnight to our soloist of today, John Fletcher, to the Rochdale uh, Metropolitan Youth Band, and, of course, to Foden's, who race away from us at the Gallop. And that's the name of a piece from Malcolm Arnold's second suite for band. <laughs> to you with tonight's sound of champion brass coming from the first round meeting of the Giants. Behind me the might of a famous works band, Foden's Motor Works from Cheshire, and waiting in the wings, Wingate Temperance, a top independent band and current Northwest area champions. Now Foden's came a close second in those championships this year, but only one of them can survive tonight, and that'll be the band which makes the most of its ten and a half minutes to entertain us to swing the decision of our adjudicator. He's Bill Relton, brass band musician, conductor and composer, and now general manager of the BBC Symphony Orchestra. As ever, 75 marks out of the 100 he gives go on technical skill, the other 25 for entertainment. And in the entertainment stakes, well, there's some British pomp and quite a lot of American hoedown in store for him tonight. Our champion brass trophy, beautifully hand engraved, lies waiting for the series winner. So does a half-hour televised concert which we're offering. But there's a lot of music to flow under the baton before that. Tonight's winner, for instance, goes on to meet the victor in next week's battle between CWS Manchester and Hogarth of Preston. And our two semi-finalists from the earlier rounds are Fairy Engineering and Bessers of the Barn. Now, brass bands, of course, have their ups and downs like we all do, and a great tradition doesn't necessarily guarantee a great performance, but a glance into the past is a pointer. <laughs> Foden's Motorworks Band celebrates its 75th anniversary this year as one of the biggest, most travelled names in the banding world. Early trips from the headquarters at Sandbach in Cheshire were made in a steam-powered band bus. Well, the firm did, after all, pioneer steam wagons on the roads in 1900. But while the firm was changing to diesel and becoming Britain's largest independent vehicle manufacturer, the band meanwhile, was winning 11 national championships, nine open championships, and featuring in major concerts all over the world. This year, under musical director James Scott, there's renewed vigor at Foden's, and four members of the band are current national quartet champions. 
Wingate's temperance band started life as a Methodist fife and drum band over a hundred years ago. Later on, after a temperance organization provided money for some new instruments, the temperance name stuck, but not necessarily the habit. Well, the Lancashire bands won every major title in the contest calendar since those days, even though earlier this century, nine of its players were killed in a big local colliery explosion. It's the only band ever to do the famous double that's winning both at Bellevue and the old Crystal Palace two years in succession, and Wingates were British Open champions two years ago. So, with both our bands tonight under comparatively new leadership, there's everything to play for. Our spin of the coin gives first blow to Foden's. They choose to open, in this jubilee season, with the majesty of Sir William Walton's Crown Imperial. <laughs>
Crown Imperial setting a lofty tone for this knockout contest. We come almost literally down to earth now, though, with a folk song arranged by Gordon Langford as a trombone solo. It features Norman Law, if he's ready, scrambling onto his rostrum at the back there, quite clearly, if he is ready, seeing the wood from the trees in the ice grove. Thank you, Norman. Your face isn't at all like a pickled onion. And from an ice grove with its roots well and truly in the English countryside, Foden's crossed the Atlantic for an American knees up to finish. It's a folk festival for bands. It has Michael rowing the boat ashore down by the riverside, and it's gathered together and called Hoot Nanny.
there are some coincidences. Foden's and Wingate's are the only bands in this competition so far to play three pieces each. Both choose to finish with an American knees up or hoe down, whatever turns you on. And like Foden's, Wingate's begin now with the big one. Musical director Malcolm Brownville opens with a new arrangement of an orchestral classic, the finale of Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. <laughs>
Malcolm Brownville, incidentally, might well be out to prove a thing or two on a personal level tonight. Some years ago, he used to play in Camel Laird's band when it was conducted by, yes, Foden's musical director tonight, James Scott. Well, his next choice to that end is an original piece of brass band music by Malcolm Arnold. It's Siciliano. <laughs> And so, finally, to the Wingate's reply to Hoot Nanny. They paint a picture of a fictional little town in America which is supposed to be reminiscent of the good things in anybody's hometown. No, it's not Peyton Place, it's Cranberry Corners, USA. <laughs>
Well, two top bands ending with two portraits of America seen through different eyes. Which picture, I wonder, appeals to Bill Relton? Gerald, they're great bands, these two bands, and they've both lost a tremendous number of points, from my point of view, by picking music, which is not really representative of the brass band scene. It was vigorously played and beautifully played. But Foden's, uh, with their long traditions, only included one original item, which was, in fact, an arrangement itself, and Wingate's also only had one item of original music. We do encourage them to be as entertaining as possible, of course. I've got no complaints about the program being entertaining, but I do believe that the great literature of the brass band music, uh, brass band repertoire, can also produce entertaining programs. Well, apart from the program, what about the manner of performance? What do you think of it? Well, I'll say, I'll, let me say something about Foden's first. I found it um, very difficult to understand why a band of this quality should be as nervous as they were. But their tuning was excellent, and it's a very stylish band. And Wingates? Wingates, well, I've really got to say that the, their rhythm was very, very well marked. There were, again, some uh, evidence of nerves and some slips. Some of the tuning wasn't always good, but I really must take my hat off to their excellent cornet line, particularly the soprano cornet. Splendid. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, what tipped the balance? You're going to tell us in a moment what the result is, but what tipped the balance in your eyes? Um, I think the, the tip of the balance was in the style. In the of style? The band's playing, and the great control of dynamics, uh, which wasn't exercised by both bands. OK, we've controlled ourselves to wait. What is the result? <laughs> the result is that the first band to play was Foden's. I've awarded them 90 points. The second band, Wingate's, I've awarded them 89 points. <laughs> Well, thank you, Bill. One point in it, and with that one point, Foden's go through to wait for the winners between CWS Manchester and Hogarth of Preston. And until those two meet next week, good night.